Award-winning American author David Van has experienced great tragedy. His father killed himself when Van was just 13. For three years after my father's death, I felt so ashamed. I didn't want anyone to know. So I said that he died by cancer. His father's sudden suicide affected him deeply. Well, I felt doomed for years. I really thought that suicide was waiting for me. That it'd be something I couldn't escape. Van Penn Legend of Suicide, a heartbreaking semi-autobiographical collection of stories, which he says helped him escape the trauma of his father's suicide. What I wish my father could have known at the end is that if he had just waited, if he had just stayed a little bit longer, his life would have reshaped. Often a controversial topic, Van is forthright with his own idea about suicide. I think it's a mistake to think of suicide as being selfish. Or self-sacrificing. I think both are wrong. Recently, in Beijing, to promote the Chinese edition of his best-selling book, he says suicide rates in China are also a cause for concern. Suicide happens a lot. That there are a quarter of a million suicides in China every year. A veteran of navigating life's ups and downs, Van has some sage advice for warding off despair and depression. I wish people could know that. Well, if it all feels unbearable, if life feels unbearable, then make a change. When you were young, there were three years when you told no one about the truth of your father's death,、mm -hmm. and、uh, but later you became more open. You wrote and talked about his death, and、mm -hmm. suicide became a theme in two of your novels.、Mm -hmm. And why has it changed? Well, for three years after my father's death, I had a kind of double life. I. Was a, a straight A student in school, so everyone thought I was fine. But at night, I was sneaking around with my father's guns, and I was shooting out all the street lamps in the neighborhood and aiming at people through their living room windows through the scope. You know, it was a very scary and and kind of dangerous time. My father killed himself with a gun, and then my my family thought it'd be a great idea to give me all of his guns afterward. And that that was obviously a very、uh, stupid mistake. And and I didn't go to therapy, and so guns were my therapy. I, I shot things instead. So. That shame and the guns were a terrible combination. That is probably one of the cultural differences between the East and West. Because in China, sometimes we emphasize、um, self-sacrifice,、mm -hmm. and it could mean that dying for others. So, like killing oneself is not necessarily something shameful.、Mm -hmm. Whereas in the West, it is not the case.、Mm -hmm. And what do you think of this difference? I think that. In the West, we do view suicide as a sin and as a, a violent act and as a cruel act, and also as, as being very selfish. And it sounds like there is a, a large cultural difference if it's possible to think of of suicide as as self-sacrifice. But I think it's actually a mistake to think either way. I think it's a mistake to think of suicide as being selfish or self-sacrificing. I think both are wrong. I think the truth about suicide. Is that the person who's suicidal isn't thinking clearly, and I think that if if we consider suicide selfish, I think we're we're wrong in that way too, because they're suffering so much at that point. They're not doing some selfish act for themselves either. They're really just not able to think clearly, suffering, see their options closing down, and and then make this terrible mistake. After his parents divorced, Van went to live with his mother. When at age 13, his father invited him to spend a year in Alaska, but he said no. His father killed himself two weeks later, weighed down with the failure of his second marriage and other disappointments. Van emerged a deeply affected teenager, spending the next 15 years struggling with chronic insomnia. He says the book was in part a second chance at saying yes to spending that year with his father. It says that fiction is a distillation of experience, and so why did you write a fiction about your father's、um, as a suicide instead of a memoir?、Mm -hmm. I didn't write a memoir because there was no story. There was no one true story. Everyone in my family had a different story about who my father was, what happened, and what it meant. We couldn't agree because we all felt the shame and guilt and anger differently, and so I had to. Have the story transform on the page and become something else in order to free me from what I felt. It's about retelling the story and finding a different version of that story. 
And getting over those legacies also of guilt and anger and shame and such uh, come through telling the story. Your love for your father is what is attaching you to this world. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think now I can say that everything that's best in my life came from everything that was worst before. The best things now came from his suicide. And although his suicide at first separated me from the world, it was like the world was broken and had no meaning, now all the ways in which my life is most meaningful and that I feel most attached to a very good life and to the world come through my father and his experience and matching my own life against his and thinking about what his suicide meant. Himself weighed down by repeated rejection of the book. At one stage, Van considered giving writing away for good. Finally, Legend of a Suicide was published, winning the hearts of literary critics around the world. Van now teaches creative writing at the University of Warwick in England. Forgive me for asking this, but and you've been through many difficult times, first your father's death, and then it was really difficult to publish your books. Mm -hmm. And there were six years when you almost abandoned writing. Mm -hmm. And have you ever fallen into deep depression and even, you know, considering, like, put an end to, to your life? Mm -hmm. And if so, then how did you overcome it? Well, I felt doomed for years. I really thought that suicide was waiting for me. And it felt like a, a legacy from my father, that, that it would be something I couldn't escape. Turns out I did hit a low point in my life where I lost everything. And after three or four days in that time, I realized that I hadn't had a single thought of suicide. My mind just hadn't gone there. So this terrible time became a great time in my life. I realized I was free of that legacy. After 22 years of fear of it, it finally was, was over. And I wish more people considering suicide could have a, a sense of that, of how much it will affect everyone around them. That more than anything else, the people around them love them and just want them to still be there. More than anything else, they will, they'd be willing to go through any other changes, but just to, to stay and, and, and not leave in that way. David Van is also concerned about the suicide situation in China. According to suicide rates in China from 1995 to 1999, published on Lancet, 287,000 people in China kill themselves every year, and suicide is the fifth most important cause of death in China. No recent official data from the Chinese government are available. A 2009 report by the World Health Organization found unlike statistics from the West that suicide rates for Chinese women are higher than for men. Many of those who take their life are from rural areas. In contrast to the Western countries in China, uh, more women kill themselves than men. Uh, what, what do you think of this um, phenomenon? My guess is that for rural women in China, which you, is the highest for a suicide rate, they must be feeling that their options are, are not many, that they're put under pressure and the options are closing in around them and they don't have a lot of possibility of being able to escape that or reshape their lives. In, in the U.S. it's mostly it's a higher number of men who commit suicide than women. Why is that? Because of the burden of family? Well, uh, I think that the reason that we have a higher suicide rate for men in the U.S. is because men tend not to talk about what their feelings and also tend to become isolated. That women do a better job of talking with each other and reaching out to social support groups. What is your advice for those who have considered ending their lives at some point of their life? I wish people could know that, well, if it all feels unbearable, if life feels unbearable, then make a change. Leave the marriage or leave the job or move somewhere else. You know, do something. At that point, any change is okay and the consequences are okay because in the end you want to live and, and be able to reshape your life. And your father's death have left you an insomniac for 15 years, and you didn't see a therapist back then. Mm -hmm. And looking back, and this kind of trauma has deeply affected you. And if you can, if you could live again, what could you do? You know, could have done to to improve your situation. Well, I definitely should have gone to therapy when I was 13 years old. And my father killed himself. That was a big mistake, and it was because my mother was a therapist. So she thought she could judge. She thought that I was fine. 
but actually it'd be really helpful to talk to a therapist. And I might not have been an insomniac for 15 years. I might not have felt guilty for so long. I might not have lived a double life of shame for three years. It might have been better. You know, all those legacies might have been shortened. They might have happened for a shorter period of time.